Uh, my name is Marcus Davis, and I'm a 15-time UFC vet, and I retired from uh, mixed martial arts in 2014. Uh, growing up in Bangor, Maine, not a whole lot to do there. Uh, so typically when you don't have something to do, you find something to do and it's never something you should be doing. So um, as a teen, I was your typical broken home uh, fighter story. Uh, no father figure in the house, just a mom. I had an older brother, I had a different father. So I got screwed on the gene pool there because uh, my brother's father was like uh, six foot three. My father was a five foot eight midget. So uh, I had a real big brother uh, that uh, constantly we, we got into fights. And uh, from there, um, you know, poured over into a lot of street fights. And I came from a family of all fighters. So on both sides, but more so on my mother's side, uh, the McKinnons. Uh, my grandfather was a professional uh, boxer. And actually retired without ever losing a fight. Uh, also fought in the Navy. Um, and, uh, you know, fighting was in my blood. And so that was it. That was what was uh, what I would decided or what I was going to do for the rest of my life was was be involved in fighting. It started originally in 1983 because there were no boxing uh, gyms in the Bangor area. So in 19, uh, 1983, I started in traditional martial arts. I did uh, uh, Okinawa karate and then Uchiru karate, uh, and then uh, I did Taekwondo. Um, I competed in the Junior Olympics uh, for Taekwondo, really don't talk a whole lot about that. Uh, and then um, finally, uh, after getting in a lot of trouble fighting on the streets and everything, uh, the Police Athletic League had a uh, boxing program. So I started uh, boxing in, uh, in there. Um, all the cops that were arresting me for fighting all the time became like kind of like these illegitimate father figures and told me that you know if I stopped getting in trouble, if I stopped fighting on the streets, that uh, they would pay for me to be able to uh, box. And that was it, that was all I needed was that opportunity. And it uh, straightened me out, I mean, maybe not totally, it took some time, but um, that was it, that was the beginning of my boxing career. Um, so I was a heavyweight and I got a phone call um, I had just sat of nowhere uh, from a promoter that asked me if I'd be interested, because knew I was a boxer, be interested of uh, just jumping in the <laughs> cage and fighting. And that's literally how it happened. You know, I wasn't really looking or anything, and I was running nightclubs years before this. Uh, I had uh, um, I was running a nightclub, and Tim Sylvia was one of the doormen at my nightclub, and uh, I was training the door guys. Um, because, you know, I felt as though to be a doorman, you got to be able to handle yourself. And Tim at that time was a semi-pro uh, football player, you know, giant guy, you know, uh, 345 pounds or so at that time. But uh, didn't really have the, you know, the dexterity, the mechanics for, for fighting. And uh, from there, started training with me, went to some of the the really quiet hush-hush events that nobody talks about. So there's a lot of fights that Tim had that you wouldn't see on any record because they weren't collecting that information. So he fought in Pancrase and stuff like that and these garages and, and stuff uh, all over New England. And um, from there, uh, went to a UFC event and met Pat Militich and that's how Tim uh, went out to Bentendorf, Iowa to be a sp uh, sparring partner. And uh, later on, I flew out there and uh, stayed with Tim and um, and uh, that was it, you know, I was hooked. But yeah, my first fight, I was called, uh, asked me if I'd be interested in stepping into the cage and fighting a guy who was a uh, Golden Gloves uh, boxer from New Jersey, but he was also a All-American wrestler from Montclair uh, University. So, and I said, yeah, and so uh, ended up, uh, 
stopping him and uh, I think at the first round I can't remember but by TKO it caught him with the left hand right off the bat uh, came out like a righty and then I switched to a lefty and threw a uh, straight left knocked him down jumped on him and just pounded him out and that was it, it was my first fight I think my first yeah probably this might have been was this I'm trying to think if this might have even been 99 but it was yeah, it was very early, uh, it was very gritty, it was not, uh, you couldn't do it really anywhere. There was, you know, as, uh, legally anyways, um, I believe at one point there was only 13 states that even allowed it, um, and where I lived uh, was not one of those areas. So, uh, yeah, you were doing it uh, in like kind of club fights and stuff like that, and like I said, there were ones where they were held at garages and stuff. Just like if you ever look up and you watch like when uh, that, those fights like Kimbo Slice had and stuff, uh, you know, which were all backyard stuff, but there's one there um, uh, where, you know, they're fighting in a, in a large uh, warehouse and that's kind of what that stuff was. It was like something you'd see in a movie, but not with all that other bullcrap drama that you see in those movies. It was just a bunch of guys getting together and having these fights, so. Um, you know, at that time, it was still that old school. Every time you went in, that's why they'll tell you back in that day, some of the best fights you'd ever see were in the gyms and they just weren't held out in front of people because people were trying to, you know, show that they were the best in the gym, that, you know, people were throwing heat, they're going for the knockouts. I mean, it was tough. And even uh, after, you know, when I was training and the Ultimate Fighter had just started, even at Sio Tong, uh, you know, we were, you know, elbowing each other in the face. I mean, you had pads on, but still, I mean, it was pretty heavy. 